Hello, friends. Welcome to Village Idiots of Christ. We're nuts for Jesus and just plain nuts. We're in Revelation 19 today, we're quickly um, closing out Revelation, and then we're going to start a whole new thing after that. So let's just jump right on here and see what's going on. After this, I heard what sounded like the roar of a great multitude in heaven shouting, Hallelujah! Salvation and glory and power belong to our God, for true and just are his judgments. He has condemned the great prostitute who corrupted the earth by her adulteries. He has avenged on her the blood of his servants. And again they shouted, Hallelujah! The smoke from her goes up forever and ever. And this is the false system, the, the whore Babylon, the one world church, the the uh, the corrupt that corrupted the earth and um and again this is bigger than that but there's a rejoicing over her punishment and see and not you know people have a hard time with that but this is justice coming to this this horror again this system that ruined everything that ruined the world all the kings of the earth committed adultery with her and the people of the earth did so this was a system this was like the Tower of Babel, it was a system that perverted things, that changed things, and that was wicked, but it was worldwide. And so there is a rejoicing in the fact that God has finally punished her, that God has brought justice to her because she, it says the blood of the saints, you know, that she drunk, she drank the blood of the saints. This system, you know, killed the saints and just, it was just, a tra it's just tragic, tragic stuff. And so her punishment is just. And so let's go ahead and keep going here. You have to explain this because, you know, you see people rejoicing over some, uh, some uh, of over judgment. It can seem to be, you know, really harsh that people would rejoice. But again, what she's done is worthy of judgment. And the, the, um, the people in heaven are rejoicing that God is just. That's what it's about. The 20 and the verse 4. The 24 elders and the four living creatures fell down and worshiped God who was seated on the throne and they cried, Amen, hallelujah. Then a voice came from the throne saying, Praise our God, all you servants, you who fear him, both small and great. Then I heard what sounded like a great multitude, like the roar of rushing waters and like loud peals of thunder shouting, Hallelujah, for our, our Lord God Almighty reigns. Let us rejoice and be glad and give him glory, for the wedding of the Lamb has come and his bride has made herself ready. Fine linen, bright and clean, was given her to wear. Fine linen stands for the righteous acts of God's holy people, the righteous acts of the saints. And so we're going right from this judgment, and then we're going right in here to the wedding supper of the land. There's such a juxtaposition here. You go from the judgment, you go you go from the judgment of the false religious system to the to the the rejoicing and the celebration of the the fault. You could say. The judgment of the false saints, those that, that those uh, the false system, and the rejoicing of those who are part of the true system of God, Jesus Christ, the true saints, and so you see the judgment and you see the rejoicing, and so again, this is the um, let it, the wedding of the Lamb has come and His bride has made herself ready. This is an actual thing. We are going to be married to Christ someday, and I believe it happens after the judgment seat of Christ, once all the saints are purified and refined, and all the past is done away with, and they are going to be who they're going to be for eternity. After the wedding, after the judgment seat of Christ, I believe then the next step is the wedding is the wedding supper. And so, and uh, fine linen, bright and clean, was given her to wear. Fine linen stands for the righteous acts of God's saints, and so. Uh, it's like we're going to wear our righteous acts like a robe. It's just, it's just the, the pictures here are just beautiful. And and then and we're verse 9. Then the angel said to me, write this. Blessed are those who are invited to the wedding supper of the Lamb. And he added, these are the true words of God. I like that. You're blessed if you're invited. And he wants you to make sure you understand these are the true words of God. Amen. And here's John makes his first mistake here. Verse 10. At, at this, I fell at his feet to worship him, but he said to me, Don't do that. I am a fellow servant with you and your brothers and with your sisters and sisters who hold the testimony of Jesus. Worship God, for it is the spirit of a prophet who bears testimony to Jesus. So John twice, now and later, falls down and worships at the angel's feet. And he just, again, he get caught, probably got caught up in the moment and all of this because the angel was revealing this to him as it was given to the angel from Jesus, who got it from the Father. And so, um, so this is, um, so we're, we're seeing here, um, again, that uh, 
you know, even John, again, you know, we're all, we're all human. John just made a mistake here. He was so overwhelmed. He fell down to worship, you know, and he just, and the angel says, whoop, don't do it, buddy. I'm, I'm a fellow servant with you. Now we're going to see justice come. And this is Christ's return. And this is the judgment of the Antichrist, the false prophet. Amen. So, and, and all those that follow him, let's go ahead and go, jump right in verse 11. Through 21. This is the fine. We're just going to, well, well, we may have to stop, but we'll just go in. I saw heaven standing open. There before me was a white horse whose rider is called Faithful and True. Jesus, of course. His eye, um, With justice, he judges and makes war. His eyes are like blazing fire, and on his head are many crowns. He has a name written on him that, on, that no one knows but he himself. I love that. He is dressed in a robe dipped in blood, in his own blood, and his name is the Word of God. Again, Jesus. He's the Word made flesh. The armies of heaven were following him, riding on white horses and dressed in fine linen, white and clean, coming out of his mouth as a sharp sword with which to strike down the nations. He will rule them with an iron scepter. He treads the winepress of the fury of the wrath of God Almighty on his robe and on his thigh. He has this name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Man, there's a lot to unpack here. Again, his eyes are like blazing fire. We saw that in chapter 1 with Jesus. Uh, he has many crowns on his head, probably innumerable. Uh, again, he is dressed in a robe dipped in blood. Again, his own blood. He shed his blood for us. And his name is the word of God. And again, the armies of heaven, that's us. We're going to be coming back. He's going to be coming on a horse from heaven. <laughs> and he's going to be coming down from the supernatural realm to the natural realm. And I believe this is literal. I believe he's riding on a horse from heaven back to the earth. You know? You don't want to believe that? You want to believe it's all metaphorical? That's your choice. But I believe this is literal. Because he's because he's coming down to conquer. Jesus is no longer the Lamb of God. He is now, I mean, he was the Lamb of God. And he will always be the Lamb of God who took away the sin of the world. Now he's the Lion of the tribe of Judah. And he's coming to make war. Coming out of his mouth is a sharp sword which he strike down the nations. He will re- rule them with an iron scepter. He, tries the, he treads the winepress of the fury of the wrath of God Almighty. I mean, he is enforcing God's sovereignty, his justice, his all of that. Jesus is enforcing that. The wine press of his fury. Wow. And he is King of Kings and Lord of Lords. He is the the ultimate king and the ultimate Lord. Okay. And I love this. On his robe and on his thigh. Not only his robe, I remember when I caught this. On his robe it says King of Kings, Lord of Lords. Also printed on his thigh, tattooed to his thigh, or engraved on his thigh. His, you know, the meaty part of the top part of the leg, above the knee and below the hip. It says, King of Kings and Lord. So when he's flying through the sky on his awesome horse, if his robe flies up in the w- the wind turbulence, you can still see King of Kings and Lord of Lords on his thigh. God didn't want anybody to say they couldn't see that. No. If his robe's flying up while he's flying, it's right there on his thigh. No one can say they didn't know this was the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. I love that. I love that it's on his thigh as well. That's just cooler than cool. And I saw an angel standing in the sun and cried in a loud voice to all the birds flying in air. Come, gather together for the great supper of God, so that you may eat the flesh of kings, generals, and mighty and mighty men, of horses and of their riders, and of the flesh of all people, free and slaves, small and great. This is uh, this happens in Ezekiel thirty nine after Israel after God defeats Israel's enemies. There's this giant feast set out before God for all the birds, and this happens at the end of the tribulation period, um, when when Jesus strikes down his enemy. All of the birds are going to gorge themselves on the flesh of these soldiers. Then I saw the beasts and the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to wage war against the rider on the horse. He's going to be Antichrist and all the armies of the world, probably tens of millions of people, maybe hundreds of millions, they're going to gather in the Valley of Megiddo, Armageddon Valley, the Valley of Megiddo, and they're going to try to make war against this guy supernaturally riding out of the sky on a horse. I mean, come on. I don't care if you have all the nuclear weapons in the world. You don't think the guy that that made the atom can defeat the atom? It's like, do, 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 do. so they're they're ready. They got their hundred million plus men, and they're ready to fight against Jesus Christ returning from heaven on his glorious horse. Good luck. <laughs> just so it's so ludicrous. You just want to go, really? <laughs> I mean, if they at least surrendered, maybe there'd been a little mercy. Probably not. But it's like, guys, this is the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. You can't defeat him with natural weapons. Uh, <laughs> but the, <laughs> I'm sorry, but but it's just some things are so great. It's like the Big Bang Theory, really. 
A big explosion in space a billion years ago created all this beauty, personality, love, color. Right, yeah, uh-huh, yeah, right. The best analogy is a tornado goes through a junkyard, and on the other side of the junkyard is a 747. Yeah, right, uh-huh, sure. You want to believe in the Big Bang Theory? Oh, well, I'll pray for you. <laughs> but this is just as ludicrous. Now, verse 20. But the beast was captured, and with, it, with him the false prophet who performed the signs on his behalf. With these signs he deluded those who received the mark of the beast and worshipped his image. The two of them were thrown alive into the fiery lake and burning sulfur. Most fierce punishment in the Bible, other than Jezebel being run over by horses and eaten by dogs. The false prophet and the Antichrist are going to be captured um, uh, I don't know if it was, it doesn't say who captured them, probably Michael, possibly Jesus himself, but they're captured, they're taken alive, alive, in the physical realm, alive, and thrown into the lake of burning sulfur, alive. I mean, they go from this realm to the supernatural realm of the lake of burning sulfur, alive in their bodies. Whew, that is a fierce, fierce punishment and judgment. They're thrown right into there. And can you imagine the punishment? There's millions of people dead because of these two guys. And, man, heavy stuff, heavy stuff. But that's the fiercest punishment in the Bible, in my opinion, other than Jezebel being run over by horses and eaten by dogs. That's a fierce punishment. To go from this realm to the supernatural realm, in your body, thrown alive into the lake of burning sulfur. That is bad stuff. Uh, the two of them, uh, the rest the rest were killed with the sword coming out of the mouth and the rider on the horse, and all the birds gorged themselves on the flesh. So, in, in the interpretation for the sword coming out of the mouth, the sword, of God, the sword of the Spirit is the Word of God. It says that in Ephesians 6, I believe, the armor of God. And so, Jesus, I believe, in the Left Behind series, did this great in the, the glorious appearing. Jesus, as Jesus is speaking, that the literally, the, the army of Antichrist are exploding, imploding, blowing up dying his his literal words are literally destroying his enemies that sword coming out of his mouth is his word and has the power to kill and destroy and he's wiping out all of his enemies not one of these cats is going to survive they're all going to be dead and again these all who received the mark anyway so they were doomed to begin with but this is fierce fierce stuff so but that's revelation 19 there and now we get into we got the millennial reign next. We got the judge. We got the um, the great white throne judgment. And then we got the new heavens, new earth. So we're winding down three more chapters. Um, but again, then we're going we're going to do James, John, Romans, Matthew, uh, Revelation. Continue do Revelation again, and then Proverbs, and then I uh, finish out Ecclesiastes. And the plan is after Ecclesiastes to go to Joshua and Judges. Do them as a set. A lot of good stuff going on in those two books. Lots and lots of good stuff. So, anyway, we love you. Can't love you, love you. Can't get enough of you. We appreciate you. Hope you enjoyed this tonight. But be glad you're one of those. And see, blessed and holy, blessed are those who are invited to the wedding supper lamb. These are the true words of God. Be glad if your name is written in the book of life. If your name is written in Jesus's book of a book of life, you are going to the wedding supper of the lamb supernaturally with all of us. Eating at these great tables, these bank in the banquet hall of God's uh, God's banquet hall up there. All of us eating together, celebrating our betrothal and the consummation of the marriage to Jesus Christ. We're going to be Jesus Christ's bride forever. Israel, physical Israel, was God's bride, the Father's bride. the The body of Christ is Christ's bride. Makes sense. And so we are all blessed in this. Be glad your name, if your name ain't written in the book of life, confess Jesus Christ as Lord. Receive him in repentance tonight knowing you're a sinner, and uh, make him the Lord of your life, and and uh, know that he was resurrected. Man, just receive him tonight as Lord and King, as Lord and Savior. Anyway, love you, love you, can't get enough of you. We appreciate you, and we will see you tomorrow. Bert, Ernie, and the Chicken Girls. We all love you, cluck, cluck, cluck. <laughs>